there. Welcome to Extra Healthy-ish, the big sister podcast to Healthy-ish. Both podcasts are from body and soul and I am your host, Felicity Hartley. Now, every so often a book title comes across my desk that grabs my attention. In fact, the cover of this one I'm going to talk about now is simply joyful. It's called Wild and Witchy and it's by Yorta Yorta writer, empowerment coach and activist Alira Potter. Alira writes that when she brought her connection to country into her readings, her healings and her life coaching sessions, everything just fell into place. Well, what also fell into place is her spiritual sassiness. Yes, she's got a lovely sass about her and she's going to talk about why we all need a bit of that in our life. Alira, thank you so much for coming on Extra Healthy-ish. Now, how do you stay Extra Healthy-ish in your life? Uh, Well, I've actually started incorporating the ocean swims every single morning. I think like it's something that I needed in my life to have an outlet, number one, but number two, just really look after my mind, my mental health. I think that was really important for me to, you know, bring that into my life is this early morning ocean swims. So do you get up and just go and how long do you spend in the water? Yeah, so I get up, like I've been getting up at six every morning and whoever wants to join me, they can come. If they don't, I'll go by myself. Um, I'll spend like maybe half an hour in the water. Sometimes it's cold and I'll only just do like a little dip in and out. But I feel so refreshed and so set up for the day. I can't explain it. Until people actually do this, it's just, it's the best feeling. How are you going to go? Now you're in Victoria. How are you going to go in the middle of winter? I know. I said that to my friends. I was like, I'm going to have to get a wetsuit or something for winter just to be able to go in the ocean. Oh, yes. One of those full steamers with just your little head poking out. Yeah, literally. Yeah. (laughs) Now, you've got a new book out. It is got a fabulous title, Wild and Witchy. And you talk a lot about spiritual sassiness. Now, this is a fantastic term. What is this exactly? Yeah, so I think the spiritual sassiness is something that I sort of made up because I'm the spiritual being, but I'm also like a really sassy human being that I just, I don't really care what people think about me and I just love sharing all this spirituality stuff and I'll bring the sass to it as well too because I know that this space can be very woo-woo for people, but I love just, I don't know, being really sassy during like all my sessions and things like that. I like that. You just, yeah, well, you just, injecting some life into it maybe well exactly on the pun but um, yeah yeah how did you get into spirituality I mean you've got a a interest well really I found an intriguing interesting story and talk to me about the role of your mum in all of this yeah so mum passed away when I was 17 so really young and I was gifted uh her oracle cards and I just remember being like why do I need these oracle cards I'm never going to use them were you into it when you were growing up was you no oh my gosh no I was a typical naughty teenager like mum was really spiritual and really witchy too And I just remember being like, no, this is random. Like what teenager (laughs) would want to be like involved in this? And I was gifted the Oracle cards when she passed and they literally sat in a box up until probably after my divorce. After my divorce, I really hit rock bottom in terms of just drugs, alcohol, just really running myself into the ground. And I just remember I found the Oracle cards and I was like, oh, like I'll, I'll pull them out and I'll just have a play with them. And, and then, yeah, I just started using them every single day, which turned into, I guess, I don't know, just something to lean on instead of the whole party girl phase that I was going through. What are Oracle then, cards exactly just for those people who don't know? Yeah, so oracle cards are different to tarot cards. So the oracle can be something like that you use for maybe, you know how they do the spreads, a past, present, future spread, or you might pull a card as an affirmation. So generally the oracle cards have a picture on it and then they'll just have like some words underneath and maybe they'll have a book attached to it with the meaning of that card, which is really powerful. So when you started pulling them out every day, Mm. how did that grow into this? Well, your whole new career, really. Literally, yeah. Well, I just, I started to realize that I had something there. Like my intuition was much more powerful than just an everyday person who has an intuition. I really started to open myself up to this spiritual world. And I really was like, okay, I'm open to receiving whatever I need to be open to. And I started doing a lot of spiritual development courses. 
And that's when things like started to shift in my eyes. There was like the spiritual awakening. I um, started to receive what's called downloads from spirit. So when you come and see me for a reading, message, messages will drop on in and I'll pass them on to you, which is kind of crazy. So when this started happening, I just remember saying to my mentor at the time, like, I don't know what is going on. This is like wild. And they were just like, just roll with it. Just whatever happens, happens. And from that point on, that's when I did like my coaching course around spirituality and things like that. And I just kept building and educating. And then my business just sort of flourished because people were really loving the things that I was putting out there on social media. And tell to us about the importance of bringing your culture into your spiritual teachings, because the Indigenous culture has a, a big connection to this, doesn't it? Yeah, I just thought the way that I wanted to sort of step into, I guess, the wellness space, it's a very interesting space to be in. It's a very whitewash. There's no cultural safety. There's no cultural awareness. There's no, you know, black representation across the board. So I thought, I want to be that point of difference. I want to come into this space and I want to raise awareness around cultural appropriation, around the rituals and tools that we're using. And I want to incorporate my own culture. So I was doing things like an acknowledgement of country in every single session that I was doing. And then during a healing session that I offer for people, I play my clap sticks as a way to sort of tap out any negative energy that that person's holding on to. I just thought, yeah, I wanted to be that point of difference and incorporate First Nations culture and spirituality wherever I could. Oh, t- trust me, you're like a breath of fresh air into this, <laughs> this <laughs> the wellness industry. We'll be back after this short break with more from Alira. You talk about filling your cup. Tell us about this and how do you fill yours? Yeah, filling your cup is so important. Like I just feel like if you if your cup isn't completely full, you're not going to be able to serve the rest of your community, however that may be. For me, filling my cup is my ocean swims every single morning. It's my like walking my dog Cosmo. It's binging Netflix on a Saturday if I wanted to. It's just doing all those things that maybe we don't allocate the time to do because we all live such busy lives. So for me, it's like that's a form of self-care. It's like filling my cup. What about, do you have daily spiritual practices or is that more the ocean swims or do you, you know, what do you, what do you do to, uh, I suppose, fill your spiritual self? Yeah. So pretty much every single night I'll do like a night meditation to sort of really switch off and just, I guess, drop in. And then I'll try and do yoga once a week where I can to just really like implement that spirituality because that's so powerful in itself. Every day, I don't know, you can sort of see behind me, there's an altar. I'll light candles pretty much every day. Yes, listeners, it's just, she's got a little altar. I can see it off the side of our Zoom. Yeah. yeah, it's that's, I don't know, like every single day, like I have to clear the space as well too to like set it up for the day. So lots of different spiritual practices throughout the day to sort of get me get me motivated and get me moving. Does some, some of these um, passed down from the Indigenous culture, can you talk a bit more about what, Well, the spiritual practices of, you know, Aborigines and Indigenous culture, because I think Mm -hmm. we can, we would all love to know more and learn more. Yeah, I just, I think the whole, the spirituality around our culture is quite sacred. So I never sort of like share a great deal. Fair enough. But I think from, I guess, from that perspective, the connection to country that Indigenous people have, that's spiritual in itself. And me going and doing those ocean swims, that's me connecting spiritually to country and the country that I'm living on. And that's me like connecting inwards as well too with my culture. So, I mean, I guess in that respect, that's sort of the spirituality, but every every tribe is different in the way that they bring their spirituality to to the table, I guess. Yeah, great answer. Now, what about the magic side of things? What mm. What is this all about and how, how can this help us with our lives? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Everyone should incorporate magic into their lives. Um, I guess for people who are sort of new to the magic sort of space, I ease them into manifestation and manifesting, you know, just things that they want to bring into their life, whether that's love, career or whatever it may be. And then the other side of the magic that I do is things around like candle magic. So with witch candles. If I'm wanting to, I don't know, bring in a little bit more self-love, I'll sort of set up on my altar a beautiful like pink candle and set an intention of just I need a little bit more amplification just around self-love to nourish myself and love, you know, everything. But 
in my book, there is some cool spells in there for people if they're wanting to like try it. I know it's so out of people's comfort zones, but it's just a little bit of fun, I think. No, I like those spells. I actually thought some of them, well, I like some of them. <laughs> I thought, yeah, yeah. You've got a rich, actually, you've got one in there about protecting your energy. And I thought this is something yeah. we can all do every day. Can you tell us a bit about how we go about this? Yeah. So, I mean, the protecting the energy is so simple, you know, especially if we're walking into an environment that we may not feel comfortable with, but protecting energy, it's just like that visualization of just pretending that there's a white light around you and visualizing that you're in this safe little bubble and no one can come on in. And once you start to do that and do that every day, it's almost like you feel so much more calm and protected and just know that no one's going to come into that space or no person's energy is going to come into that space. I like that. I mean, when you say spells, they're really little tricks and hacks, aren't yeah. they? They're, I mean, I love because it's all fits in with your wonderful book that they're spells, but yeah. I mean, they're not listeners. They're not spells, so to speak. They're actually wonderful little everyday hacks. <laughs> exactly. Exactly that. And anyone can do it. Yeah, absolutely. Now I think you've got, have you got one in there for accessing your intuition? How can we get better at accessing that yeah I do so in the book there is one that involves a little bit of candle magic which is really lovely um but I mean accessing your intuition anybody can do that we all have an intuition we all have it and it's a matter of people just doing simple things like going and grounding themselves in the earth like to access your intuition we need to slow down that's that's the biggest thing slow down and almost like pause before we're like making a decision that's you accessing your intuition to ask for an answer so really simple things grounding in nature having a bath just like those little things are going to help you really open yourself up a little bit more it really is just about slowing down isn't it Mm, 100% after writing the book was there anything you learn about yourself that you thought oh wow I didn't really know that or anything that you now you're doing interviews about your book you think oh wow that is so true I want people to know yeah, I, I feel like I'm constantly learning more about myself that I didn't know. Like, I don't know, I'm sort of sitting here this week being like, I wrote a book. I didn't think I'd be able to do that, but I did it. And I think, I guess, me just getting out of my comfort zone with things as well too is like, oh, you did it. That's pretty amazing. So, yeah, constant sort of, I guess, realisations, which is pretty cool. Yeah, well, congratulations on your book and uh, thank you for coming on Extra Healthy-ish. Thank you so much. Well, if you do want to give some of those spells a go, make sure you grab Alira's book. It is called Wild and Witchy. If you want more from us, remember Extra Healthish, this podcast, we publish a new episode for your wonderfully sassy ears every morning, Monday to Thursday. For more, head to bodyandsoul.com.au. You can also join the conversation via Body and Soul on Instagram or Facebook. The other thing we also just launched is Body and Soul TV. That is up now on YouTube. Thanks again for tuning in. And if you have a moment, we'd love it if you could rate, review and subscribe to this podcast. And until tomorrow, happy Valentine's Day and stay extra healthy-ish.